Um, base money is the amount of cash in circulation, so it's paper dollars, and then uh, deposits that the commercial banks have at the Federal Reserve, which are all redeemable in paper dollars. So basically, it's a measurement of how many paper dollars exist. And uh, the data that we've got starts back in about 1918 with the Federal Reserve, and it goes along like this. And we're like right up here. Then <clears throat> the value of all the, so this is the value of all the paper dollars that exist, the total value. And you're saying this starts in 1918 or 1918? Uh, 19, well, they're, the Fed started in 1913, uh, right. but the data starts in 1918. Okay. But the value of all the gold held at the Treasury, take the number of ounces of gold times whatever the price of gold is at the time, was down here. And then in 1934, they unpegged the dollar from gold, and the value of the dollar sank from 1 20th of an ounce of gold to 1 35th. So in other words, the price of gold rose. It wasn't gold going up. It was the dollar going down. But what's interesting is the will of the public and the free markets. They unpegged the dollar. The free markets bid the price of gold up until the value of the gold at the Treasury matched every dollar, the value of all the dollars printed from George Washington to Roosevelt. Then we go out to 1980, and gold was at 35 bucks an ounce. Okay, so, this, so this date was 1934? Yeah, 1934. This is actually 71 here. 1971. That's when Nixon, when, Nixon yeah. took us off the gold standard. Nixon took us off the gold standard in August of 1971. And gold, uh, the will of the public and the free markets, again, gold rose and then did a little thing like that. And then for about three months, uh, actually for over a year, we could have gone back on the gold standard. Gold's price, the number of ounces at the Treasury times the new price, once it was over about 500 bucks an ounce, there was enough gold at the Treasury to pay out against every single dollar printed from George Washington to Jimmy Carter. So, this so was a, that's this was 1980. 1980, right. And that's when gold hit around 850 and silver hit about 50. Right. Yeah. And now they're printing like crazy, but gold was 850 here, and then it went down to like 250, and now it's back up to about 950. So it's a little bit higher than it was so here. This is 2009 much. where we are today. Yeah, 2009. Now, here comes the, uh, the big news. In September of, uh, of 2000. Eight, they bailed out Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the government-sponsored entities that backed all of these mortgage-backed securities. They sold, they they purchased them from the banks, they purchased the mortgages, and then they were bundled up and sold. When they bailed them out, the Federal Reserve wrote a check, and it created another. It it took 200 years to go from zero dollars to 825 billion. Can you 825? And then they printed another $900 billion in September of last year. And uh, so, so this was $1.8 uh, trillion, roughly. And then in March, they an, uh, announced another uh, $1.2 trillion. So now we're at $3 trillion do paper dollars that exist. This is in less than a year, folks. We've gone, it's almost four times, it's, it's like 3.7 times the amount of paper dollar currency that exists on this planet, paper dollars, then existed, yeah, then existed before September 9th of 2008. Now, for gold, for history to repeat, and for gold to do the same thing that it did back in 1934, in 1980, and literally hundreds of times around this planet, going all the way back to the first great inflation in Athens in 407 BC, gold would have to rise to a price of $15,000 an ounce to cover the number of paper dollars that exist today. And that's just, is that just U.S. or is it all? That's just U.S. And here's the uh, uh, big catch here. A lot of people are worried about gold being confiscated or something, the U.S. government banning private ownership of gold. Well, the problem is 70% of all the world's currency is U.S. dollars. More than half of those dollars are outside the United States. If today Obama announced that they were going to ban private ownership of gold and make it illegal once again for Americans to own, I believe that the rest of the world would get rid of dollars and buy gold. They'd go, oh my God, there's something wrong with the dollar. I better get out of dollars and, and buy gold. 
the government would get exactly the opposite of what they would be trying to achieve. So the government really is in a box. They can't make gold ownership illegal again, uh, and, and they have no control money. over it. Yeah, and they can't stop this. If they stop it, the economy is going to collapse. Yeah. So basically, that's where we're on. It goes back again to the start of the Federal Reserve, 1913, 1971, 1980, and this is where we are today. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that's interesting was that 1971 was an interesting date because by 1980, the bailouts were in the millions. Yes. By 1990, the bailouts were in the billions. And by 2009, it's now in the trillions. And probably headed toward quadrillions soon. <laughs> so as you know, that, as we've said in Conspiracy of the Rich, every fiat currency, everything that's been printed, ultimately goes to its true value, which is zero. So that's why gold and silver may be the biggest infinite return of all. Yes, because if the paper dollar goes to zero, that means you got infinite returns. Infinite returns. And so there's so many ways you can make money, but again, it's the unfair advantage of having some degree of financial education. And this is the reason we wrote Conspiracy of the Rich, is because this, this is not her opinion. These are facts right now, and I think we're out of control. And as you read in Conspiracy of the Rich, there's, two, there's been two kinds of depressions. One was a deflationary one, which was the U.S., and the second was an inflationary one, which was Germany. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to inflation. Yes, and uh, either way, though, what was interesting, this was a deflationary period, yet you had massive gains in the purchasing power of gold. This was an inflationary period. Uh, so it's, I, I think we're in for some amazing times ahead. And you can either be afraid of it, or you can put yourself on the right side of things, and this can be the greatest opportunity in your lifetime. This could be the biggest transfer of wealth ever. Yes. This is Mike Maloney's book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. And thank you for being a rich